What's going on guys, Billy here, and today I've got the second episode of my Drone Flight School series. Today we're going to be going over the pre-flight checklist as well as what you should do in order to get ready before you fly your drone. Now in today's video, I'm going to share with you guys my pre-flight checklist. Other people may have different things filling their list, but I figured I'd give you guys a look at what I do before I fly my drone. To start things off, I'm going to simply read the checklist to you guys, going point by point all the way down the list. And then after that, I'm going to go a bit in depth on each point separately. Now to start things off, I would always check to make sure you have everything. Next, ensure your firmware is up to date. After that, evaluate your flying zone. Next, ensure your batteries are fully charged. Then, ensure your propellers are fully locked on. And then, you should ensure that your SD card is plugged in. After that, you should format your SD card, and then finally, you can turn on your aircraft. Once you turn on the aircraft, you should calibrate your compass, then check to make sure that all your systems are normal. After that, set the correct camera settings depending on what the weather is like outside. After that, correct any gimbal tilt, then ensure that your home point is set to make sure that the drone will come back to you in case any connection is lost, then push the antennas into place, then find a flat surface to take off from, next start recording, from there send your drone up and hover for around 20 seconds to listen for any defects, and finally you're good to go and fly. Now that we've gone over my full list, feel free to stick around as I go in depth about each point separately. Now first up, you're going to want to check to make sure you have everything. Usually I like to do this before I leave the house, but whenever I get to the site that I'm flying on, I usually set the drone down and make sure that I've brought everything with me. Something that tends to help me is to light all of my equipment out and then pack it into the bag one by one to make sure I'm bringing everything with me and not leaving anything behind. Next up, we're going to want to ensure that our firmware is up to date. We always want to make sure that we're on the latest firmware as we don't want to be flying with older software that could have potential bugs. Now, we can do this in two ways. First of all, we can click on our general settings, scroll all the way down to about, and then make sure that the number corresponds with the latest update. Another way to update your firmware is from the main screen. Usually, once you turn your drone on, and if it notices that you're on a later firmware, it will automatically ask you to update. The next thing on my pre-flight checklist is to evaluate our flying zone. Now basically, I'll step out of my car or wherever I'm flying and I'll evaluate this area with my eyes. Basically, I'm looking for any low trees or low power lines that I could hit. Other than that, I'm also looking for pedestrians who may get pissed off at me for flying my drone. Next up, you want to make sure that your batteries are fully charged. And I'm not only talking about the drone battery, I'm also talking about the remote controller battery. It would be a real shame if your remote controller dies while in the middle of flying, and your drone has to rely on its return to home feature to make its way back to you. Checking the status of your batteries is fairly simple. All you have to do is click the button once to get an LED indicator of how much battery life it has. Next up, we want to ensure that the propellers are fully locked on. Now, as you know, with the Phantom 4 and the Phantom 4 Pro, it has this simple twist to lock on feature, but sometimes I feel like my propellers aren't fully locked in, and I have a little test to check them. Basically, I'll do an initial spin with my hand, and then from there, I'll tap underneath of the propeller lightly to make sure that it's nice and tight. This step is fairly crucial, as you don't want a prop flying off as you're about to take off. Now this next one is the one that gets me the most. You want to make sure that your SD card is always plugged in. I seem to always forget this whenever I'm running out of the house as it is the smallest component to your drone, but obviously you can't record without it. Basically, I mean, you can still fly your drone, but you can't get that awesome footage. So you always want to make sure that you have your SD card with you and plugged in just so that you don't lose it because again, it is super small. Next up, we're going to want to format our SD card. To do so, we're going to click on the camera settings, click on the gear icon in the top right, and scroll down until we see Format SD Card. Now, the reasoning behind this is because we want to clear all files that are stored on the SD card so we have the most storage to deal with. This can also clear any errors that you have, such as an error that I recently have gotten that says that your SD card is writing at a slow speed. Finally, after done with some of that tedious work, we can turn the aircraft on. As you guys know, you have to double click the button and long press on that final click in order to turn the drone on, but there's still more we need to do before we can fly. We're going to want to make sure that we turn on our drone on a flat surface as well as take off from this flat surface as it will give us the best results. If the drone is leaning backwards, it could fall that way once the motors are started. And the same thing goes for the front. If the motors are started when it's leaning towards the front, it could accidentally fall forwards. Aside from making sure that your drone is safe upon takeoff, you're also going to want to turn your aircraft on on top of a flat surface just so that the drone can center the gimbal. After turning the aircraft on, we're going to want to calibrate our compass. To do so, we click in the top left under the status bar and find Compass Calibrate. From there, we follow the on-screen instructions, which tell us to spin with the drone horizontally and then vertically. Now, I know that I look dumb doing this, but I do think that this is imperative, as when you're transporting the drone, it does sometimes throw off the compass calibration. After calibrating the compass, we want to make sure that all other systems are normal. Now we can do this pretty quickly by simply glancing in the top left corner. If we see green, we're good to fly. If we see yellow, we should fly with caution. And if we see red, we shouldn't fly as there is an error. 
For example, I have a compass error in this clip, and that's basically because I'm inside, and I think that I was close to my TV or another electronic device, so it was simply throwing the compass off. Now you can click on that status indicator in the top left, and from there, take a look at the different sensors and the different channels for your aircraft. Inside of here, you can make sure that everything is good and you're ready to fly. After ensuring that all of our sensors are set correctly and are in good condition, we want to move along and set the camera settings. Now I've already done a whole video on this, how to achieve the best Phantom 4 Pro camera settings, but I'll go a little bit in depth here just to give you guys a quick overview. Now basically your ISO should always be set between 100 and 400, anything more will give you a lot of noise. From here make sure your shutter speed is set double your frame rate and make sure that the aperture is set to an appropriate value so that your shot is not over or underexposed. After setting these values, we want to move on to the second tab and ensure that our white balance is set depending on what the weather is like outside. If it's sunny, set it sunny. If it's cloudy, set it to cloudy. And next up, we're going to want to correct any unwanted gimbal tilt that may have happened during the initial calibration of the camera. Now, we can do this in two ways. What you're going to want to do is click on the three dots in the top right corner to bring you to the gimbal settings. Hit adjust gimbal roll, and from there, we can tilt the gimbal from side to side depending on which way we want it to go. From here, we can also go back to the same list of settings and hit gimbal auto calibration. From here, it'll do its thing again by looking up, down, and side to side to make sure that the gimbal is nice and centered. After correcting any unwanted gimbal tilt, we're going to want to make sure that our home point is set. Now this should do it for us automatically, but if it doesn't, we can do this manually by clicking on the three buttons in the top right. Once we go into the top left where the drone icon is, under the main controller settings, we have two separate options. On the left, we can choose to set the home point to where the drone physically is, or we can set to choose the home point where the physical controller is. Next up, we're going to want to make sure that our antennas are flipped out into the ready position. Now, as we know, when we're traveling with our drone, they're usually folded in like this, but this doesn't give us the best signal possible. What we want to do is put them outwards and face them somewhat forwards so that we can get a nice, clear connection. This will ensure that you don't lose connection from your drone and accidentally crash it. Now before we take off, we're going to want to start recording, and the reason that I say this is because you might forget once you get up into the air, you know, obviously once the drone gets in the air, all you want to do is just fly, and you may forget to hit that record button. So before I take off, I make sure to hit the record button so I never miss a shot. Now moving on to the final thing that we need to do before actually flying, we want to make sure that we allow our drone to hover for around 20 seconds. During this time we're listening for any defects or anything that may sound weird, such as a weird vibration. Basically you know what your drone sounds like, and if you do hear anything weird, you want to make sure you land the drone and check it out to make sure everything is good. And now, once you've completed all of these steps, you're good to fly. So anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed, definitely leave a like and subscribe if you're new around here as I have been trying to upload daily. Also leave a comment down below letting me know what's on your pre-flight checklist if you have one made. But anyway, that's about it for me today, and I'll talk to you guys later. Peace!